the towers of the financial world in Frankfurt am Main. But where there are high peaks, there are also deep canyons. The climate on the peaks of high finance is raw and cold. It's a game of poker for shares, currency and bonds, played from trading offices and the banks. In Frankfurt alone, there are thousands of traders trying to extract profit from the market and avoid having it extracted from themselves. Decisions concerning millions of euros are made in seconds here. As a trader, you experience things at a breakneck pace. Life as a trader is life at top speed. The degree of emotional turbulence that normal people experience in a month, a trader can experience in a day. Joachim Goldberg was a trader at the Deutsche Bank for 21 years. He knows what makes traders tick. They have to be extremely robust under pressure and grasp many things at the same time. Often they have to decide intuitively. Many times that works out fine, but if it works too well, too often, then danger lurks. You can then feel that you're in control. If you've been right seven or eight times in a row, you can start believing you're God. And that's when the trouble starts. Strike! Strike! Like a gambler, the trader thinks he or she is in control of the game. But his or her decisions are always a guess, a prediction of the future. The trap is that the future isn't completely predictable. Finance psychologist Monica Muller's job is to help traders avoid that trap. She runs small seminars training traders not to let their emotions run away with them. If you take losses several times in a row, then suddenly a switch is thrown in your brain and you're more willing to take risks. It sounds funny, but that's what happens. Psychological studies show that traders who have taken losses in the morning tend to take more risks in the afternoon, no matter how the market is developing. The roller coaster of stock prices is stressful. A trader wants to compensate for a loss as fast as possible. Monetary losses are also losses of face, and that means more stress for the trader. Monica Müller says banks should do more to prevent such risky behavior. There's definitely a deficit to cover here and a lack of communication about mistakes. Communicating about mistakes is good risk communication. Part of risk management is communicating about mistakes and how losses came about. Losses can come from mistakes, but losses are also just a very normal result of a trading day. So a good trader always has their emotions under control. But traders are people too, and emotions are always at play, except in the computer. We can see the tendency for the computer to replace the trader in many areas. But I can't imagine the trader ever being completely replaced. Computers don't have a psyche, but it's psychology that drives the market. If all the computers are equally powerful and are pitted against each other, there will be no market anymore. Only human beings bring enough movement into the game because people would rather make a mistake than not play at all. If you want to find out more about the ups and downs in a broker's life, you can log on to handelsblatt.com or go to our own website.